Hi, this is Earl Oliver from Sully Finish Wrestling. This is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com. This is Sean Reed, boxing writer and undercover low-key wrestling fan. And you're listening to Duke Love Wrestling. Woo! Welcome to the NBA Finals Special Edition of the Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast. That's right, I am your man, the Duke, the man of the hour, the man with the power, too sweet to be sour. Listen, I'm taking a break from wrestling right now because tonight we have the Golden State Warriors taking on the Toronto Raptors. Okay, the 2019 NBA Finals is going to be amazing. Top stars, everybody's going to be watching. And I figured, hey, let me reach out to my man, the Basketball Hall of Famer. The legendary journalist, the legendary basketball analyst, Peter Vesey. Peter doesn't bite his tongue. You know, he's going to let you know how he really feels about things. But one thing about Peter is that he knows his history. He knows all the players and he knows what he's talking about. So listen, hold on one second. Let me get Peter on the line and let's dig right into these NBA finals. This is Peter Vesey. How are you, Peter? I'm good. Good. How are you doing? Very well. Very well. Listen, I, I, a little birdie told me that you left us on the East Coast for uh, sunnier days somewhere else. Yeah, I moved. I moved to uh, Phoenix in early January. Oh my god! And uh, yeah, it's been pretty. It's amazing. I mean, five months have gone. I, I can't even. I can't even fathom it. You know, people say, "Well, you know, it's." so hot out there, blah, blah, blah. And I tell them, you know, I haven't slipped on the ice once since I've been out here. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and you know, when you're slipping on the ice at my age, um, and which I did every winter, I would, I would take a fall three times or so. And no matter how I tried to be careful, you know, that black ice and, uh, you know, you're in the East Coast, you know, it snows and then it turns to ice and it stays ice for months. And no matter what, I mean, so I've seen my feet above my head many times and feeling like, okay, I'm going to break something now. And, uh, you know, I think I have actually, I, I, you know, without really knowing it over time, I, I need a shoulder replacement. Wow. And I'm, sh- I'm sure that's from taking a fall. And, uh, I can't think of anything else. It wasn't for diving on loose balls. That's for sure. <laughs> Well, hopefully you pack maybe, your, maybe uh, diving you know, women, dude. Maybe, maybe from diving on loose women. Now nah, I might have done. Boy. That. <laughs> <laughs> I think there might well, be. That's how I got my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh Jesus. Well, hey, you're gonna have to reach out to Charles Barkley to figure out where all the hot hot spots is down there. You know. <laughs> You know, I've been coming out to Phoenix since the uh, since bef- probably before he was born. Um, oh. Started coming out here in '69. How old is he? I don't know, but um, I, I know I know where to go, and where not to go, nice. and uh, yeah, wherever yeah. he goes, I know not to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm sure the East Coast misses you, though, Peter. I mean, come on, man. You know, especially this time of year. Um, I, I gotta tell you. Well, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> if, if you would have said to me in the beginning of the year that in the NBA Finals it was going to be the Golden State Warriors, I would have said, "Yeah, tell me something I don't know." But if you would have said they're going to be taking on the, the Toronto Raptors, I would have told you you're out of your damn mind. Stop smoking those doobies, Peter. So, how? No, you know, let, let me happen? stop you. So let me stop you. So last year, I mean, they look at where they finished. They were one of the top teams in the NBA last year. So they 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 fired their coach, you know, Masai fired the coach who was coach of the year and uh and then made a uh you know, an, took an unbelievable gamble by trading DeRozan for for Kwai. And um you know, we 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 understood the gamble, we understood it, but at the same time had it failed you know, and, and it still could, even getting to the finals, it could end up a failure if Kwai leaves. And, uh, now you're out to Rosen and Kwai. You know, I remember when, when Masai took that job, he was with Denver before. And, uh, one of the, one of the first, uh, conversations we had after taking the Raptors job, he told me that, uh, his biggest challenge 
was to try to get a superstar to come to Toronto. And as it turned out, you know, they had a superstar in DeRozan. I mean, there's no, no doubt about it. He is. He's one of the top players in the NBA. But wasn't able to come through in the clutch. Neither he nor Lowry really came through in the clutch in the playoffs. So he, he felt he had to make a move, and uh, there was a chance to get a superstar in, in uh, Kawhi. And despite what everybody, you know, in the national media, and especially San Antonio was writing about him, you know, that he was, you know, not a guy you would want to recruit, not a guy you would want to take on because of, you know, his alleged, uh, I don't know, for a better word, jaking it, you know, he wasn't, well, he wasn't really injured last year. You know, as far as doctors said, he was healthy. His doctors said no. And so, so they killed him. And, uh, you know, as, as, uh, you know, I wrote two, two columns on that when I was writing for Patreon, which I'm not, not doing anymore, defending him and giving the inside information on what happened between, between him and uh, Popovich. And even to the point where nobody, I don't think anybody has written it since or said it since, is that they had a sit-down. They, they wrote about the sit-down at the end, you know, when it was almost all over. And uh, uh, Kwai's people told me that uh, the sit-down was about Kwai wanted Pop to apologize for what for what happened. And he wouldn't do it. And that's when he said, I want out. That's it. I'm done. Get me out of here. And he did. So... Um, you know, it reminds me uh, vividly, and you know, really, it's hard. It, it, it's it's the, the guys who cover the NBA today, they have no sense of history for the most part. I can't say everyone because I don't read everyone, but for the most part, what I read, they have no sense of history. Because had they had a sense of history in this situation, they they would have brought up Andrew Tony, what happened with him in Philadelphia, when. Harold Katz, the owner, you know, decided that uh, his doctors were correct in saying Tony's foot was not injured. And, uh, you know, Tony was, was injured, as it turned out. You know, after months and months of this going on, you know, it turned out, yeah, very, very substantially he was injured. And, and so for at least 30 years afterward, I, you know, I'm doing this math without even thinking about it, but at least 30 years after earning that vicinity, Tony would not come back to Philadelphia wow. because of the because of the way they treated him. Even though Katz was no longer the owner, because the media the media did it also. Because the media is, is you know for the most part uh, you know a bunch of lemmings who just follow what they're being told. You know we can go over situation after situation where that happens, and then it's and then it goes on forever. Uh, the Mark Jackson situation is a perfect example, you know, the media just repeating everything that they were told by by management and PR people, and and to this day, it, it's repeated. Except, you know, in special situations, the uh, the Athletic wrote a very positive piece about Mark recently, quoting Jerry West, who who supposedly, you know, was kept out of practice by Mark Jackson, which was bullshit. You know, but it was repeated how many times and how many times, you know. That we're never, never going to ask Jerry, which I did at the time. Jerry said it was bullshit. But, but uh, you know, Jerry being quoted. So I'm getting off on a tangent on Mark, but there's so many situations where the media just just doesn't doesn't understand. It's like, it's like I'll give you another one. Like Chris Broussard, he, he actually tweeted that, it was the it was Durant's worst night could be Durant's worst nightmare that that the uh, Warriors got through the uh, semis you know without him and that might you know might get through the finals without him too. This is his worst nightmare. And, and I said, really? I said, so was it was it Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's worst nightmare that in 1980 Magic Johnson? Took, took his place at center because he was home in L.A. injured. And in game six, he beat the Sixers in Philadelphia, you know, with a monumental game. So was that Kareem's worst nightmare? I mean, they're, they're idiotic. They have no sense, of, no sense of history at all. It's pathetic. It, it really is. And, and it's funny yeah. that you bring up Mark Jackson because you're right. He will not get the credit that he deserves for – 
laying the foundation down for what we see now with this Golden State dynasty. You know, and the athletic, the athletic really did give him that those props. That whoever the writer is, I don't know. I don't subscribe to them, but you know, I was told by a number of people. Um, one, one of one person, in fact, who who works for a team that uh, needed a coach and wanted to see what was written about Mark. But it wasn't only West who had said said positive things about him. It was the players that he coached, and also the uh, the president of the Hawks, who was with the Warriors. I can't remember his name. Was it with the Warriors at the time? And so he got he got some recognition. And you know, Kerr always gives him the recognition because as, as a basketball guy, he has to. Yep. It would be lunacy not to. Yep. The players know what was up. They understood. You know, unless you were Andrew Bogut. You know, you know. I mean, you know, who's another idiot? You know, who who knocked him at the time because oh, Mark didn't play the center. He didn't think. He didn't, yeah. Well, how many times does Curry not play the center? You know. So, but but uh, you know, let's quote let's quote Andrew Bogut. You know, who 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 what, that that one year, the first year they won the championship, Andrew Bogut, who who would not vote to give any of the uh, ancillary people. A share, a playoff share, you know, which they always do with teams, you know? And I know for a fact he voted against it. He wouldn't give up any money. Well, what, what an asshole he is, you know? <laughs> so, whatever. Wow. Wow. We're, yeah. we're definitely getting some history here from uh, Peter Vesey. So, so tell me, the move to move DeRozan in favor of, of Kawhi, that, that trade, mm-hmm. right? I was always yeah. under the impression it was Kyle Lowry who was the issue in Toronto. And that DeRozan was the guy who was trying to keep everything together. No, I don't think I don't think there was any issues at all. I think first of all, those two guys were extremely tight, as far as I know. Um, it's just that they didn't come through in the clutch. You know, big games. They, you know, the games that they took off, not on purpose, but they didn't produce. So. You know, you have to understand that why why uh, Masai would would take that risk because they wanted to get to that next step. You know what? You know, I'll give you something else that nobody nobody is pointing out is that uh, Kyle Lowry, when Masai when Masai joins Toronto, I believe he made one trade with the Knicks. Oh, who did he get? Bagnani. Yep. I believe he traded Bagnani to the Knicks for a number one pick and turned out to be disastrous. And then he was about to trade Lowry to the Knicks. You can look it up. And I mean, and, and, and I remember Masai telling me exactly what happened. He said they came to him and offered a, a pick for Lowry. Notice they still need a point guard. And, and the media, of course, you know, got wind of it and knocked, knocked the Knicks. You know, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to let this guy rip you off again? He just did it with Bagnani. Now he's going to do it with Lowry. We're going to give him another pick for Lowry. So that, so they backed out. They took, they took back the offer. Big mistake. And I mean, it's, 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 it's hilarious how the Knicks, <laughs> the trades they do make suck and as long as they don't make suck. <laughs> And they're still paying for it as a result. Yeah, I no, mean, here he is, Larry leading. I mean, he, you know, he really, really, really has uh, showed well under pressure in these playoffs. Absolutely, and, uh, tough guy. And I, 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 I feel, I feel real good about that because when he was in Memphis and he broke his finger, and it was an All Star game, and I believe it was in New Orleans. No, I don't remember exactly where it was, but. It was somewhere down south, I think, and uh, he had a bro- he had a cast on his hand that he, he he was around, and I went up to him and I told him I said you know I really I really like your game, so I just want you to know that. I think it was his first or second year, and uh, who knows if he remembers it or you know. But he thanked me at the time, and, you know. And years later, I mean, look look at what he's been able to what a career he's been able to put together. You know, when he was in Houston, he got into it with McHale. You know, he, he used to question uh, decisions by McHale. Why are you doing this? He, he's a guy that asks a lot of questions. He doesn't just take things, you know, you know, he's not like, 
he's not like that 18 year old soldier that's being told to take the hill and okay, you know, let's take that hill. You know, Larry, Larry would, uh, would, uh, you know, question. And, um, I remember, um, oh, what's the guy's name? Hinkle, Hinky, Hinky. Um, I saw him at an all star game, um, when he wasn't supposedly talking to any media and I saw him at an all star game and we discussed. I had retired by then, but I, we discussed uh, Lowry, and he told me exactly what kind of guy he was, how much he liked him, and he loved the fact that he questioned. So I didn't know at the time that that's, that's what he did. Mikhail didn't like it, and uh, so they traded him. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah and, and, and such is history for them, too. That, that's, that's, yeah. So in the end, is, is this an example of, how, how solid Kawhi Leonard is. He goes to Toronto. Now they're in the finals. And win or lose, I mean, they made it. First time in, in, in the franchise history. history, over 20 years yeah. now. Right. Is this an example of how great Kawhi Leonard is, or is this an example of the Toronto Raptors being that damn good of a team, even without Kawhi Leonard? No, I look, he may, he is making them the team they are. They don't have the Rosen. And I questioned, I questioned whether they were going to be able to go as far as they did because I didn't believe that they had enough firepower in the backcourt. You know, I, I, I liked Van Fleet. I liked him. Um, but I didn't think he was a starter. And, uh, I didn't think Green, who they got in that trade, also I didn't think he was going to be able to be, you know, be able to, uh, compensate for not having the roles. And so I felt that they didn't, they didn't have it. You know, now this, this Norman Powell has, you know, has, has emerged as a force, which has really, really been helpful. Um, so Green has been phased out, basically, or will be, yeah, you know. So I, I, everywhere I, Green know, goes, by the way. Everywhere Green goes, he gets phased out. He won championships. I mean, he, he, he was, he was a great player for, a great role player for the Spurs. I have nothing bad to say about him. And plus he's from Long Island, so. Ah. <laughs> um, you know, but let me let me just say this uh, Kawhi, okay, so somebody sent me a note an hour or so ago and they said, Well, let me just say that just a short little bit. Let me just say that uh Kawhi played sixty games this year. And that was all he said. And uh this is a good friend of mine who's by the way associated in, in uh almost He's associated indirectly with the Lakers. So I wrote back to him. I said, so what's your point? What is your point? The fact that he stayed healthy, you know, by resting and rehabbing that injury, and he stayed healthy for to be ready for the only season, the postseason, that counts. I mean, so what's what's the problem? You, 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 are you knocking him because he sat out 22 games and, and people did knock him again during the year for doing that. But who knows a player's body more than the player? Well, what was he doing? He was taking off so he didn't have to play. He didn't want to, no, taking off so, so his body could, could rehab from, you know, you don't want to play back to back sort of. And, uh, so he knew his body and, uh, you know, all you have to do, all you have to do is watch how Kawhi conducts himself since he's coming to the league and, and watch how he conducts himself on the court and how he conducts himself in interviews. He, he's a man. He's a real man. And, uh, and nothing, nothing but, uh, hosannas to say about him. Damn. So, so who's going to take it? The, the Peter I know I, nah, ah. I'm not going, nah, I'm not going there. You know, like I really, I really can't, I can't get into it. I, I think, I really do. I think, you know, these idiots on ESPN make a huge mistake by, you know, oh, okay, who do you like today? Who do you like today? And they, you know, all four of those fools decide, you know, this is why we like that. And meanwhile, they don't understand that by doing that, they, they, Rob themselves of any credibility for objective objective uh, critiques of the game. 
Mm-hmm. You know, now they're rooting. They're rooting for the team they just picked. That's what they're doing. And and so, you know, the producers are stupid to do that. And uh, you're not supposed to do that. You know, as a writer, as as a journalist, as, as you know, a person, an analyst, and you're, you're supposed to go on and do the game, call, call the game, you know. And, and then you could, and then if you say something during the game, one way or the other, negative, positive, nobody can say, well, of course you're saying that. You know, you picked them. Well, you didn't pick them. <laughs> you know, again, again, uh, the producers, today's producers are out for lunch, as, as many of the editors are on the newspapers. They're like, oh, man, let's, let's pick, let's pick who. And we used to, you know, our, our editors used to demand that we pick, pick somebody. And, uh, you know, so you have to do what your editor says, but, um, TV doing it every game is just preposterous. Well, because ultimately it changes, right? I mean, I mean, the of course, you know, Pierce, greatest team in the Pierce. world is a month ago, right? A month ago, yeah, everyone was P- talking about the Sixers. Yeah, how about Pierce picking picking the uh, Celtics? Oh. You know, after Game One, now, that uh, game series is over. It's you know it's what? Over. <laughs> That's what he said. Get him off the air. Just get him off the air. You know, he wasn't even smart enough. And the producer wasn't smart enough because the producers are obviously scared of these guys. They're afraid to demand anything. And they didn't say to him, you know, wait a minute, hold on a second. Milwaukee won the first game. You don't see any way that they can make an adjustment. Like, this has never happened before. A team has never beaten the team. You know, we we talk about that Memorial Day massacre, Lakers and and Celtics, you know. Celtics kill the Lakers, wind up losing the series. So if Pierce was doing that series, again, the series was over. Celtics win. That's it. It's over. But he wasn't even smart enough to say, you know, I'm a player. Let me figure out what they can do to change things up. It's only one game. I mean, what do you think? The coaches were going to go in there. Okay, let's play the same game plan. It's exactly the same. We got wiped out. We're done. Pierce says we're done. And uh, so, so, you know, don't make him, don't make Paul Pierce a coach. Holy crap. <laughs> You know, and the yeah, same thing, it, you know, you know, uh, it's the same thing as, uh, when a team, the Raptors, Raptors lost the first two games, right? And, uh, and then when the, when the Rockets lost the first two games also in that series, it's like, to the, to the, it was, the series is over. But you don't remember all the times in the past, of course they don't, there's no sense of history. All the times in the past when the, the, the coming out of it, you, you coming out of those two losses, you say, okay, they held home court. Now we're going to go and do what we're supposed to do on our home court. That was the attitude. Mm. But in, in this in this day and age, it's like, oh, no, season's over. They lost the first two. <laughs> I Maybe just, they're betting I, on the I, games I, and they're trying to sway one way nah, or another. Nah, <laughs> that is just, they're just stupid. Don't give them, don't give them the betting out. It's stupid. <laughs> well, speaking of stupid. Yeah. What are your thoughts, switching up speeds here to, to the other top story in, in the NBA, what are your thoughts with the dysfunction going on over there in, in Lakerland? That is a perfect transition, stupid to magic. I like that. <sighs> I like that. Throw it out there. I, I mean. Oh, um, man. Come on. I mean, do you agree what, with how what? we handle that situation, magic in particular? It's too much to, too much to just. Zero in on how did he handle that situation. The whole, the whole situation is just so bizarre. I mean, I, I don't even know where to start with it. You know, would you start with, you know, magic being offered Jerry West as, as, do you want to have him as the guy to work in the front office? Hell no, I don't. No, I don't. You know, and then so he, Rob Palinka becomes the general manager. Now, you know, until until he said recently that Jeannie Buss said he had to take Palinka, I was always under the impression that he chose Palinka. So if Jeannie Buss was the one, why why didn't she say to him, well, yeah, no, take Jerry West? You know, no. But she wasn't smart enough to do that because why? And this is something that nobody talks about. Nobody writes about. They're scared shitless to say anything, bring Kobe into the situation. She took Polinka because she's under the spell of Kobe Bryant. Mm. 
and that's his agent. And that's why, that's why he got the job. And that's why he still has a job. Because Kobe, you know, is, is whispering, you know, what nothings. I don't know what I want to say. What kind of nothings is the genie's ear? And, uh, how does Palinka still have a job? How did he have a job the moment the Leeds fined the Lakers $500,000, the largest tampering fine ever for tampering with Paul George? How did he still have a job after doing that? And it was like overlooked. Yeah, let's pay it. 500000 No problem. Palenka. Kobe. Kobe's the reason. So from that standpoint, how how can things ever get better? You know, unless unless Linda Rambis, you know, uh, has a coup that <laughs> takes over the Laker franchise instead of, you know, being the consigliere to her, to the genie, which is another bizarre, bizarre occurrence. I don't think anyone um, predicted that one, by the way. Well, no, Kurt well, Rambis' she's, wife. She's been her friend forever, been her best friend forever, so now she has an actual say in the organization. Kurt wow. is actually Kurt is actually doing a lot more than people realize. You know, I know that when a friend of mine, uh, agent tried to call for an interview, um, he called Palinka, and Palinka, you know, I don't know what he said to him, but then Rambus called the agent back and said, no, we've, we've already decided, you know, on our pick, you know, thanks for calling. So, so for Rambus to call back and say that, that means he's got a lot of power right now. Mm. And, uh, so, so, you know, the Rambi, the Rambi, you know, they're, they're involved in that situation. And, you know, Kurt, who never, who, you know, might have been one of the worst coaches in NBA history. Absolutely. Now, now, now he's got input into, uh, into the Lakers structure, you know, and that's how Jason Kidd, I have supposedly got the job, Rambus. You know, hired him as an assistant uh, coach, which, again, unbelievable. I mean, every aspect of this, you know, deserved common, but, you know, we just don't have time. I could spend all night knocking Jason Kidd. And, um, but now, but now he's, he's second in charge and, and will soon be first in charge, I'm sure. Uh, so, hold if, on a second. Let, let's stay there for a second. Do you, do you agree with Teron Lou getting the hell away from that situation because they were trying to force Jason Kidd on him? Yes. Yes. I mean, you know, thank God that, you know, he can do that. I mean, he can afford to do that, but he's still getting paid by Cleveland, so that, that helps. True. That you don't, that you don't have to settle. And he didn't like the money they they were offered because it was probably less than he was that he is still getting from Cleveland. So oh, there were a couple of Luke Walton was getting. Luke Walton, Walton got all that damn money. It's like Luke Walton doesn't have a championship like I do as a coach. Yeah, I mean, look, Luke, Luke never ever should have gotten that job. I don't care, you know how he took over a team that was on cruise control. You know the car. You don't even have to steer it anymore. Just put the put the cruise control on and go ahead. And that's what he did. Kerr was sick. Team kept winning. You know, Luke Luke was there on the sidelines filling out the uh, filling out the starting lineups. Uh, I, and and they and they turn around. You know those dummies that were there before Jeannie took control of the team. You know her brother Jim. Mitch Kupchak, I, I, I don't, I don't know how much Mitch had input into that. He could not have said. I, mean, I know Mitch a long time, another Long Island guy, by the way. He, he could not have said, "Let's give Luke Walton five million dollars a year." He, <laughs> he could not have said that. But that's what he got. And uh, preposterous, another preposterous. I'm, I'm going to use that a lot. And uh, no, so, so. Um, so what are we up to now? And Magic, Magic accuses, accuses, quits, he quits, you know, uh, which I swear to God that night I was writing a, a column and I did write the column that that was right when, you know, I, I knew a lot of stuff was going on. And again, if you bought my column, you could look it up. I knew a lot was going on and I knew this guy Baxter Holmes from ESPN was writing 
was investigating big time on what was going on. And uh, mm. I, I never thought that Magic was going to quit. I thought by the time that article came out, he'd be fired for all the stuff he was doing. So he quit. I'm just, I'm just waiting, you know, I'm, I'm just waiting to, for, you know, a game, a Dodger game soon. And Magic announces that he's quitting during the seventh inning stretch. Wow. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically the equivalent, huh? But so it was a bizarre way to quit. It was bizarre. Uh, hey, you know, hey, don't look now. Don't look now. But magic's bizarre. So, so, um, <laughs> yeah. so he announces it, and he, you know, then he goes on ESPN. Oh, which I'd bet anything. I would bet anything. I would bet anything you owe, not what I owe, but anything you owe that ESPN paid him to go on there. They had to. As part, would, yeah, as part of their deal, you know, yeah. hiring them again to do all this. You know, let's let's tune in to hear what Magic Johnson has to say. <laughs> oh, my God. Most After everything that's going on, I yeah. don't want to hear anything he has to say. I, never, I, don't, I haven't wanted to hear anything he said off the court since he retired. I, you know, he's just. Well, listen, as far as he's concerned, sense. Rob backstab. That's it. And Jeannie Whitley. Okay. That was, believe, that was the gist of everything he said, right? Rob back, backstabbed me. Jeannie wouldn't listen to me. Yeah. I, well, I, you know, I, I, I was surprised that he couldn't, he couldn't do what he wanted to do as far yeah. as fire wall. I am surprised at that. I knew Polinka was backstabbing him. That was that was common knowledge, and I'm not even paying close attention to the league. And then for Polinka. To go on, to go on the, to go on in the press conference and say that it's not true. I, you know, I'm very disappointed to hear this. I didn't know it here. Now, again, has any writer actually come out and said, "Oh, oh, I see. So, so you're calling him a liar. You're calling Magic a liar. Let's put it where it is, because that's what he did. He's calling him a liar, and uh, and we know he's not lying. This Palenka might be, you know, the most uh, congenital liars I've ever, I've ever come across in my life, the way he could put it together. And, you know, again, in that ESPN article, there were many situations where he you was know, lying, 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 lying. Well, the whole Kobe and, met with the guy from Batman who's actually dead. And, wow. You know. No, it's, it's amazing. Abs- yeah. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. He couldn't still believe has <laughs> Still has his job. Still has his job. Yeah. So, yeah. unless, unless, uh, you know, Unless Linda Rambis can convince Jeannie Buss that maybe maybe a good idea to dump Polenka, but but you know, soon, you know, before before we have to actually start recruiting players, um, I, I I don't know. I I just uh, I think if, if Polenka is still there, I think what they're going to have to give to any any uh, you know ser- any any significant free agent. They're going to have to give them, you know, like besides the money, they're going to have to give them a new home. They're going to have to give them, you know, a car of their choice. And they're going to have to give them two tickets, two season tickets to the Clippers games. (laughs) (laughs) To see some real basketball, huh? (laughs) You know, Palenka Palenka is such a liar that Trump believes him. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and that takes a lot. Think about that. That takes a lot. So, so where does that leave Duke. LeBron? Where does that leave LeBron? You know, I don't he makes know. this big. He's trying to recruit. He's trying. He's to recruit. trying to recruit. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? He's he, there. He's you heard there. what he said on his own show. He said Magic didn't even tell me he was leaving. He, he didn't even say yeah, kiss my ass. He just no, left. I don't. I don't care. I don't think. I don't think Magic owed him anything. You know, I, don't, I really don't. True. But. But but you know he's there he's still there and he has to uh, he has to carry on he's got to find find some you know better players to play around him and uh, so that's that's what he's doing and um, and there we are basically do we cover everything well the, the last thing which is all related to literally everything we talked about is is the Boston Celtics my hometown Celtics here I mean you are have they a still guy. in the league uh, well that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, Kyrie yeah. Irving 
did that bizarre thing where he said in the very beginning, yeah. I'm staying here. This is where I want to be. Don't want to be anywhere else. Yeah. And then he turns around a few months later and says, I don't owe anybody anything. You know, everybody's entitled to change their mind. I, I basically stopped listening to what he says because he just, he, he spews a lot of nonsense. And um, I think he's very difficult to be around. So if he decides to leave, you know, fine. You know, I, 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 I'm okay with uh, keeping, what's the free agent, the guard, the name I won't be able to remember right now. What, free you know, agent guard. Huh? You're not talking about Marcus Smart. No, 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 the, no, the guard. Marcus Smart's already signed. He's, re- he's already got his money. No, the, the seventh man or whatever his name is. So, I mean, he, he said, he, he was quoted the other day saying that, you know, if he stayed the change, say, say the same, I'm not coming back. Yeah. Yeah. What's his name? Come on, Duke. Just Not me. Rozier. Uh, yeah, Rozier. Rozier. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Rozier. He, I'd be fine with him as my starter. Yeah. He's unbe- the kid is unbelievable, and he only gets better. Well, he got worse this year, and and uh, so they need they need to make some changes. There's no question. And uh, if Kyrie leaves, I think that's a that's a good start. Good start. You've got money. You've got some people to uh, to exchange for. You know, perhaps Davis, who I'm not a big fan of, by the way, um, but maybe with the right people he can do it. Can he be convinced to stay in New Orleans? I don't know, but nah. the Celtics have some. The Celtics have some some assets to to get to, to improve. You know, Horford. What are they going to do with Horford? Um, they've got they've got a lot of maneuvering to do. That's for sure. It's such an uh-huh. you know what you know what's happened you know what's happened is that uh, they were so bad this year that uh, Larinaga didn't even get any interviews for a head coaching job. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> Come on. Come Do you know on. his father played at my high school? His father Jim oh. played at my. He was a few years behind me. Oh wow. Yeah, and. Uh, I actually used to go go out to Malloy when I was uh, – I lived in the city, and Malloy was in Queens, and I used to go out there and uh, play Saturdays, bring a bunch of kids from Powell Memorial and um, and LaSalle Academy and, and go out there and play against the Malloy superstars, you know, like Brian Winters, uh, Larry Nega, Kevin Joyce, Bobby Carver, and uh, great, great days, great – they, God, now I, now I can't even, uh, I have about the ball in, in years. Sad. Now, come on, man. You're in Phoenix now. You you should be able, in fact, you may be able to actually walk on to the Suns at this point. <laughs> hey, the Suns are on the upswing. Let me tell you that right now. I, I mean, I, I went to a lot of their games last year, and, and uh, I recognized a lot of talent on that team, and, and I and I felt right away they were going to get rid of that coach because hmm. he, he, he didn't know what he was doing. I mean, you know, he couldn't couldn't get eight, eight in the ball more than you know eight times, nine times a game. He was having them set picks out top instead of getting them down low where he get moves. I was stupid, so I wasn't surprised at all when when he got fired. Uh, but you know, I know for a fact that at least three. Three general managers for playoff teams applied applied for that job as the general manager. They want it in because because they've got real good young talent. They've got top draft pick. They have a lot of money to spend, and the owner is letting. He gave the job. Oh, gave the job. I think James Jones earned the job from what he did last year, coming in at the last moment. James Jones took over, and you know, for the first time in I don't know when, the first time since Sarver bought the team, that uh, they have, this Jones has power to do stuff. Fired the coach on his own, you know, he fired the whole staff basically on his own. He uh, he hired the coach quickly, and... Um, you know, he's like, I'm really impressed, very impressed talking to him last year, very impressed with what he's done. They're building a whole practice facility, a whole brand new thing. They have. Who's not going to – they're going to be able to recruit. 
that, you know, Phoenix is, is, is a destination city. And uh, now, now they're on the upswing. You mark my words, man. They're going to, they're going to be, they're going to be in the swing. Maybe, maybe next year, maybe the year after, they're going to be heard from. I'm, I'm going to hold you to that. I'm hey, definitely big deal. Big deal, too. Big deal. <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, find me if I'm wrong? <laughs> I, I was going to say, I'm going I'm to have to track you down somehow. You know, out in the <laughs> desert, literally. Last, last question. Zion Williamson. <clears throat> you have him. You have R.J. Barrett. Five years from now, who is going to have the more impressive NBA uh, legacy, so to speak? I mean, in total, total speculation. And I really hate speculation. Uh, but it seems to me that a lot of people are overlooking Barrett. Um, I, I was talking to somebody who lives in Canada the other day, and they were telling me that, first of all, that Barrett's father is a big man up there in basketball, which I never knew. And uh, they said Barrett should be going into his freshman year of college next year. He skipped a year. Oh. I said, what? I said, what? Wow. So he told me. Um, he's, he's still 18 right now. So I uh, I think they've overlooked him. He started out the year as being the top guy on everybody's list. You know, Zeon, how could how could he not, you know, pass him the way he plays, you know, the energy and the uh, – the enthusiasm you got just love love the, again the way he acts on the court god sure. that's contagious sure. easy to root for but i think you know people people are overlooking Barry. i mean the knicks are going to get him at three. Oh my goodness so that's, that's going to be amazing. It, it, it's like it's like the getting the number one pick yeah. to me yeah. so yeah. i think he has more of an upside i think there's a lot of adjustment you're going to have you know, going to have to make a lot of adjustments on, you know, shooting and, you know, being undersized, something Barkley was able to do and Daly was able to do. Uh, but, and it, with his, with his, you could see his, uh, his coachability that uh, I'm sure, you know, Zion will be able to do too. But I think the Knicks are going to really come out strong in this. I, I got to tell you, one of the most disappointing things that I've seen from somebody who I, I, I'm a fan of and respect uh, Rachel Nichols. On draft night, she had both Zion Williamson and she, yeah, she had yeah, Barrett next to each other. Yeah, and she basically ignored him. Yeah. She ignored him. And not only yeah. – well, actually, she didn't ignore him. She was asking him about Zion. <laughs> you know, I don't respect her at all. I think, again, I think she's a fool. So I, I, I don't even know how she has that job, but but whatever, you know. Yeah, I, I saw that. It was it was embarrassing. It was that embarrassing. kid, that kid. What what did that kid think? You know, he had to keep a straight face. And you know, if it was me, I would say, you know, uh, you know, I'm pretty good too. Yeah, you might want to well, talk to it. me. That's but it. kid wasn't going to do that. He's he's got good parents and he's got good upbringing, unlike me. I had good parents, but. <laughs> But, but you just ignore the upbringing, huh? Right. <laughs> exactly. I, I think moments like that, honestly, Peter, are what is going to fuel Barrett to legitimately be five years from now. It, it's going to be him that we're talking about. Yeah, you know, it could be the first year we're talking about it. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think uh, that situation is going to fuel anything. I, you know, yeah, he felt. I'm sure he felt overlooked, snubbed, whatever. But he's got talent, and um, that's that's what it takes. Yep. You know, being yep. disrespected is you know okay that can motivate you, but you gotta have the talent. And um, from what I'm told, I, you know, I I don't watch a whole bunch of games. I did see them play. Too. How can you not watch Duke? Sometimes they're always on. They're they're on the air more than you know the Lakers were. True. But True. but um, anyway, I, I, I'm rooting for them. I you know the, I don't think the Knicks deserve them, but. What are you going to do? Listen, don't tell me you're going to you, you're jumping off the Knicks bandwagon for the Phoenix Suns. That would be <laughs> terrible. Now. All right, you won't be able to show your face around the old hey. table anymore. You keep that up. Hey, the Knicks, the Knicks would be glad if I'm not near them. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I do enjoy going to the Suns games. I did. I, you know, established some 
relationship with uh, Aiton and, uh, you know, several of those sons and uh, with James Jones, who's, you know, so, yeah, if I'm out here, I'm I'm definitely going to their games, and I, and I enjoy it. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Listen, is there anything you want to plug, Peter? You, anything you want to uh, bring some attention no. to beyond? No. 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 Thank you. No. <laughs> Well, no, I, I'll plug. I'll plug uh, people. Please go rescue a dog, or pledge go. money for a dog, or something, or or a cat. You know, it's like that's my passion. And, and uh, you're a regular old bark barker. You know that. You know, make sure your pets are sprayed or neutered. And, and, and there you go. The animal right. hospital and stuff. You know, let me. Let me just, say yeah. that. I went. Yeah, I do. I. I um, a few weeks ago, I went up to Utah and spent a week working, volunteering at Best Friends, which is a sanctuary for all animals. You know, save them all. That's their, their motto. And uh, that was that was the uh, you know one of the great experiences of my life, going up there and being around those animals. So, you know, I highly recommend people donate donate in their their own shelters to stop stop these killing of animals. It's, it's grotesque. Well, there you it's have it. Inhuman. It's inhuman. That's what it is. Yeah. Shout out to best friends. That, that's a, that's a really good plug there, and, and really great words. Listen, Peter, can can I have you back uh, when we get to the end here to recap yeah, the finals? Any, anytime, Duke. All right. Anytime. Wow. You talk about sharp. Okay. I mean, the, the man doesn't hold back. That's what I love about Peter Vesey. He's not afraid to let you know how he feels. He's not biting his tongue. He's not afraid of offending anybody. He's going to let you know his analysis, especially if you ask him a question. So I appreciate Peter being so candid. Uh, You know, we talked about the NBA Finals. We talked about the Lakers, Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, a little bit of everything. So we'll definitely have Peter back, and we will do part two of our NBA Finals 2019 special Once everything wraps up, we'll we'll do a recap of the finals now that you've heard this preview. Once again, folks, you can check me out at Duke Loves Wrestling. That's R-A-S-S-L-I-N. I'm on Twitter, on Facebook, medium.com. You know, write some articles over there. And also, you can check out uh, all the podcast interviews. You know, we, we don't just talk to people in the pro wrestling world. We talk to journalists like Peter Vesey, football players like Pat Carter, you name it. Uh, There's a wide selection. You can hear every episode of the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast by checking out Duke Loves Wrestling over on uh, YouTube. And the latest edition of the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast is always on iTunes, SoundCloud, you name it, all your top podcast apps. But the entire archive will remain on YouTube including when I do these little specials here. Uh, this was fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to and catching up to my old friend, uh, Peter Vesey. And like I said, we'll do a part two when the finals is over. Thanks again, folks. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. Enjoy the NBA finals. Mr. Tony Schiavone, and we're desperately out of time on Duke Love Wrestling. 